record. Praise God. On Wednesday, um, the Lord instructed us to write down what we're expecting. I don't know how many of you did that. It would be nice to see maybe by just the raising of your hands. Um, if you haven't done it, do it. It's, it's an important process to go through. Write down what you are expecting. I see that hand. Write down what you are expecting. God bless you. I see those hands that are going up. Wonderful. Now, I don't know what you went through as you wrote it down, but I'm going to show you a bit of what I saw and what happened to me um, as I was writing stuff down. Uh, we're going to go back to her back up and just go back over this word in brief. Um, and I'm going to walk through what goes, what happens when we write things down. So I use it easy to read, like I mentioned earlier on in the week, just so we can have a plainer understanding of what he says when he says, write the vision. He says here in the easy reading, the Lord answered me, write down what I show you, write it clearly on a sign so that the message will be easy to read. Okay, so I was trying to show you on Wednesday that it needs to be so clear that even if somebody's driving by, running by, they can see what the vision is and what the message is. I've added this today and I'll come back to it. Psalm 27 verse 4, he says, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after. And for David, it was that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Psalm 57, I'm adding as the final verse for the day. The psalmist says, my heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart is fixed. Ah. In another version, it says, I am determined, I am determined. We sing a song that says, I am determined, to hold out to the end. So this fixing of the heart and this determination is exemplified here by the psalmist. I'm going to bring this all together, just talking about what you learn when you write it down. One, there are things that you want but don't really expect. That's what you're going to realize. I don't know how many of you had that experience. You began to think about the things you want, but when you begin to analyze it, you're not really expecting them. When you, when you line it up against the preparation you're making for those things to happen or the things you're putting in place to make those things take place, you, know, you realize, yeah, there are lots of things I want, but there are a few things I expect. You know, I expect the sun to rise today. That's a given, you know, but but I'm not necessarily expecting something that I've been looking for, for God to do to happen or for anything that I'm working towards to be advanced necessarily. It made me reflect a little bit more about the realm of desires versus the things that I am actively pursuing God for. For example, one of the things that's always in my mind and in my spirit is about my children being saved and receiving the Holy Spirit and that being my job to help to lead them to Christ and to bring them to that point of receiving. And I know that when I reflect on my past 12 months that there are seasons of intensity um, where, with regards to helping them uh, receive Christ and then seasons where there's no intensity. And for any of us who have received the Holy Spirit, we understand that it's usually seasons of intensity, <coughs> intense seeking searching and desiring and hungering that lead to the receiving of the Holy Spirit. So I had to question myself as I said, well, you know, I want my children to receive the Holy Spirit, but I've actually dropped off my intensity. So I realized that my list of things was so, was so big, but they were really a list of things I wanted, but they weren't all things that I expected. So then that led me to have to do some more things with this list. Let me go through some things I went through. Okay, so I put your list of wants is longer than your list of expectations in reality. Um, before I go into some of these, when you have a, when you have a long list, it's like um, with any list of priority, you realize at some point there's too many things on here. And so I come back to the one thing of the psalmist. I think some of our lists need to be revisited and reduced because you can't focus on 20 things can't work towards 20 things at once. I mean, you can, someone says you can walk and chew gum. All right. So that's two things. All right. But you have to look at your list and think, mm, I don't think I'm as serious as I need to be about all these things. What's my top three? What am I really working towards? So I put here, you might learn that perhaps you're too deep or maybe not deep enough. 
when you look at your plans. So your plans are either weighted too heavily to the spirit or too heavily to the flesh. Look at them again. What are you expecting? And it's, it's no good for you to have a list of things that are, that are just spiritual and you run a house. I'm speaking to men and women who run households. You need a vision for your house. You can't have a business plan that's, that's five years deep and then you don't have a plan for your house and family that's not even a year deep. Understand, leadership and stewardship means taking responsibility and, and actually being a good steward of the resources and the time, the things that you have. So, so where are you in the balance of spirit versus flesh? You know, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a minister and a pastor and as a leader and as someone who has, desires to do so much for God, my list was so long of spiritual things. And it's great, but I'm not focusing on all those things. So I need to revisit that and find that and say, Lord, where am I supposed to be putting my energy and attention mm -hmm. right now? You realize then you need a good sense of godly priority, a good sense of godly priority. How do I prioritize this list in a godly way? Um, again, I looked at my family on this list and I had to, I, I have to now check myself because I had things on there for my children and things on there for my wife. But to my shame, to my shame, and I'm just confessing to you, my family didn't come up first on my list of things I was expecting. And when I got to the end of my list, the Lord began to rebuke me about my priorities. Um, it's, not, it's great that I'm here with you, and this isn't taken away from my family time, because I'm literally just bringing you into the time that I would be praying. I don't see this as a burden or a weight. But when it comes to... I got four children. They, they have homework that they need to do when they come home from school. I can't just say that's just my wife's job. They have educational aspirations. I, I need to be in touch with who they are and what they're aspiring to be and be a good guide for them and a good mentor for my own children. It's no good me mentoring uh, multiple men in the kingdom and, and my boys can't get time with me. My boys, they need physical, spiritual, psychological development. They need hugs from me. They don't need just waves from me. When they come in from school, I'm working and you know I'm rushing to get them out. They can't just see daddy in passing. So I need to be planning about their emotional, spiritual, physical well-being. Right? We have middle child, and you can study middle children. You know, there's a whole study in science of middle children. And your middle children can get lost. Why? Because you expect your older children to be able to brush their teeth and get on with life. And then, you know, you have to give more attention to your youngest one because she doesn't quite know how to brush her teeth and all that. And then you got the guy in the middle. <laughs> He's not even bathing properly. <laughs> you understand? So, so I cannot be aloof to what's happening in my life. I need to have a good sense of godly priority. And it's not ungodly to take care of my house. It's not ungodly to prioritize my family. It's not ungodly to want to make sure my children are saved. That's my job. That's, that's my first job. Okay, so that's what making a list will do. And so you need a sense of focus, determination, and godly unction to see this through because none of your desires are wrong. But not even God wants you to be working on 20 things at once. So, so this is where prayer reconnects us to the hearts of God, heart of God, where prayer reconnects us to the priority of God. Um, how do we know when we begin to pray, you know, Apostle Smith said this recently, and it's a, a powerful teaching, I'm going to have to reconnect with it, but he says, the most powerful prayer is the prayer of inquiry. <laughs> the most powerful prayer is the prayer of inquiry. What did David say? I desired one thing of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He's smart. Why? Because he wants to look upon the beauty of the Lord. He wants to always be looking at the greatness of God, but also what? To inquire. To inquire in his temple. The person who is an inquiring of God and making that their number one focus will have everything else in priority. Inquiring of God is not just bringing my long list to him. Inquiring of God is finding out what is your short list? <laughs> oh, you should write that one down. That's a rhema word. What is your short list? By him saying, I got one thing, he was getting everything else in order by having the one thing right. And the one thing was that he would be in a place where he could hear from God, where he could see God and find out what is your priority. 
Nothing wrong with having desires. Nothing wrong with having, um, you know, good, good wishes for your children and plans to do great things. But when we inquire in the temple of the Lord, that the psalmist says, that's where I begin to find out answers. I begin to find out how the wicked life would end. Those who were prospering. He said, my foot almost slipped just watching how wicked people prosper. But it's in the house of God. I begin to realize that they're in slippery places. And so he says in Psalm 56, 7, I am determined. My heart is fixed. May the Lord help us to find out his priorities and be fixed on seeing things through. May we rebuke every spirit of setback and delay. Everything the enemy came and brought to confuse our priorities, to divide our attention and to take us away from what God really wants us to do. Well, write down what you're expecting. Yes, but make sure we are inquiring of the Lord. I believe in all that list of things that you wrote down, that I wrote down, the will of God is in there because he speaks his will to us. But Lord, teach us your ways and help us to know what is priority to you. Be encouraged this morning.